Hey there. Ready for a deep dive today? Always. All right. So we're talking luxury cars. Okay. But um, maybe not in the way you'd think. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. So picture this. Aston Martin. Huh. Sleek, powerful. Yeah. I at know. the top of their game, right? Absolutely. Top tier. But even those automotive icons, mm. they aren't immune to, well, the yeah. occasional hiccup. Let's just say that. Oh, okay. I see. Yeah. And in this case, yeah, it's yeah. a recall. Okay. And not just a small one either. We're talking over a thousand vehicles in the U.S. Wow. Over 3,000 globally for a brand known for, well, exclusivity. That is significant. Yeah. It really is. Yeah. So what's causing such a stir in the automotive world? What's the issue? So it all comes down to a part that seems really small on the surface. Okay. The engine oil cooler hose. Yeah. You know, responsible for keeping the engine oil cool. Right. Essential for any car, but especially... Especially in high performance cars. <laughs> These Aston Martins, yeah. Exactly. These engines are built for power, which... It means a lot of heat. Exactly. And that's where the oil cooler hose comes in. Keeping right. that engine happy. I mean, a cool engine is a happy engine, right? Precisely. Mm -hmm. It's all about that delicate temperature balance. Think of it like this. The hose is like the unsung hero of the cooling system, you know, making sure everything runs smoothly, even under pressure. So what went wrong? Was there like a bad batch of materials or? Not exactly. Aston Martin traced it back to one of their suppliers. Okay. A manufacturing defect. Inconsistencies with how thick the hose wall is. The thickness of the hose wall. That doesn't seem like it would. It seems minor, right. Yeah. But you have to think about the environment. We're talking intense pressure, rapid temperature changes, even a small variation. Could lead to a problem. Exactly. Okay, right. so walk me through this. What kind of pressure and temperature changes are we talking about? Okay, so picture the engine's combustion process, at, well, a series of controlled explosions, basically. Okay. Each explosion sends out a surge of pressure, a pulsation, that goes through the entire engine, including, you guessed it, the oil cooler hose. Makes sense. And then on top of that, you've got the extreme heat. So you're getting these rapid temperature fluctuations. So you're saying it's like a recipe for disaster if the hose wall is inconsistent. Basically, yeah. It creates a weak link in the chain. And under enough stress... It's going to give way... An oil leak. The last thing you want in a performance car. Especially one with a price tag like these Aston Martins. Right. And we're not just talking about a few select models either. This recall affects three main ones. Let's get into specifics then. Which models are we talking about? We've got the DBX 707, their luxury SUV, a powerhouse with a 697 horsepower engine. Their flagship SUV, basically. Pretty much, yeah. Then there's the DB12. Now, this one's a grand tourer, Rain. meaning it's designed for, you know, high-speed, long-distance driving. But still in comfort and style, of course. Of course. This is Aston Martin we're talking about. Still a powerful engine, though, 671 horsepower. Okay, and let's not forget the Vantage. What is it? The baby Aston Martin? Yeah, some people call it that. Don't let the name fool you, though. That's still tax a punch. 656 horsepower. So definitely not a car to be underestimated. Okay, so those are the models affected. What about the numbers? How many of each are we talking about? So let's break those numbers down. All right. We're looking at 336 of the DBX 707s. Out of? Well, it's a significant chunk of their production, especially for their flagship SUV. Yeah, that's not insignificant especially when you consider exactly and then there's the db12 mm -hmm. those numbers jump to 719 wow that's a considerable portion of of their grand tour line it really is yeah and then rounding it out we've got the vantage at 40 which okay it seems smaller compared to the other two yeah but still not insignificant when you think about it right because it's a more what's the word niche it's a more specialized model. Exactly. And I think these figures really highlight the scope of this whole recall and, you know, what it could mean for Aston Martin, not just for their production, but... Their bottom line, too. Recalls are... Yeah. Between the repairs and the logistics, it all adds up. Yeah. And then there's the, the whole... Reputational risk. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So how is Aston Martin handling this whole situation from a customer service standpoint? Well, they've definitely been proactive. They issued those notifications to owners right away explaining the problem, the risks, you know, the whole nine yards. Transparency is key in situations like this. Oh, absolutely. And they made it clear that any necessary repairs would be... Free of charge. Free of charge at authorized dealerships, of course. Which makes sense. Yeah. But beyond just the financial aspect, are there any measures in place to, you know, address the inconvenience? Yeah. 
for the owners? That's a good question. And I haven't seen specific details widely publicized, but okay. knowing Aston Martin and their focus on, well, you know, the whole luxury experience. It's not just a car, it's a lifestyle. Exactly. So it's safe to assume they'd offer things like loaner vehicles or at the very least expedited service. Because maintaining their image it's about more than just the cars themselves. It's about the whole experience. Exactly. And that's what I find so interesting about this whole recall. It really highlights that tension between nice. craftsmanship, globalized manufacturing and brand perception. Oh, now we're getting to the good stuff. Right. It goes beyond just a faulty hose. Yeah. So let's unpack that a little bit. We talked about the technical stuff, the risks. But this recall, it's like a window into something much bigger. The complexities of this industry, especially at the high end. It's crazy to think that something as small as a hose can bring a whole production line to a halt. For a brand like Aston Martin, I mean, it really shows you how interconnected everything is. It's a global dance, you yeah. know? This component, made in India, ends up in a car assembled in the UK, then shipped off to who knows where, the US, Dubai, anywhere. It's like a puzzle. A very expensive, very high stakes puzzle. And with any puzzle, if one piece is off, the whole thing falls apart. Exactly. And that brings us to quality control. Which is essential. Absolutely. And not just at the end, but at every stage of the process, every supplier, every stage of assembly. Especially when you're dealing with these high performance vehicles where everything has to be. Perfect. Precise. Because even the tiniest error can lead to major problems. This recall, it really highlights that. It makes you appreciate the complexity behind, well, everything. We see a luxury car and we think about the design, the performance. But we don't always see what's underneath. All the materials, the processes, the people involved. It's a whole other level of craftsmanship. Right. It's amazing when you think about it. And it's easy to forget, I think, the human element. Oh, absolutely. The engineers who design these incredible machines. The people on the assembly lines putting it all together. And let's not forget the technicians, the ones who have to fix things when they go wrong. It takes a lot of expertise at every stage. It really does. And speaking of the human element, what about the customers? On the other end of this whole recall. Right, right. What's the impact for them? Well, for one, it highlights how important it is to be an informed consumer. To do your research. Exactly. Know what you're buying, demand transparency. Because these things, they have an impact. It's a two-way street. Manufacturers have to be proactive, but consumers need to. Be savvy. Exactly. And I think this whole Aston Martin situation, it's like a microcosm. Of how things work in general, yeah. It's bigger than just this one car company. It's about global supply chains, brand perception. The challenges of manufacturing on a global scale. It's a good reminder that even in our high-tech world, things can and do go wrong. And that those things have a ripple effect. Definitely. Yeah. This deep dive has really given me a lot to think about. Me too. <laughs> it's fascinating, isn't it? Peeling back the layers. Seeing what's underneath. Yeah. And realizing it's way more complicated than you might think. Because ultimately, knowledge is power, no, right? Absolutely. Yeah. The more we know, the better decisions we can make. As consumers, as, well, as global citizens, really. Okay, so next time I see a luxury car, I'm not just going to see a shiny exterior. You're going to think about the engine. The oil cooler hose. Exactly. The journey, not just the destination. I like that. It's all connected. And that's what makes these deep dives so interesting. Well said. Well, on that note, I think we've covered a lot of ground today. We've explored the inner workings of Aston Martin. Uncovered a global supply chain mystery. And maybe, just maybe, sparked a little curiosity along the way. That's what we like to hear. So until next time, keep those engines running smoothly. And stay curious, everyone. Thanks for joining us for another deep dive. We'll see you next time.